Okay, now that we've made a basic bolt, let's try to make something a little bit more exciting using some more of the tools in Alibra Atom 3D. In this case, we're going to be making a simple bracket. And uh, the approach that we're gonna use to model this bracket uh, is as follows. We're going to show you by going back in time in the Design Explorer. And the way that we do that is we take the dog bone and we single click it and we drag it to the top. So the first thing that we're making is a, uh, a sketch that looks like this. It'll be an L shape. We're then going to create an extrusion to extrude it out. And then we're going to make a sketch for two holes. And we're going to extrude those. And we're going to make another sketch for two holes. And then finally, we're going to add some fillets. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to go to the gem, new, new part. Now in this case, I don't have, I have a white screen, it's blank. And normally you'll see the kind of default planes and axes and stuff. The reason you don't see it here is because I turned them off. And there's two ways that you can turn them on and off. The first one is control shift P, control shift P, we'll toggle them, or you can go to the Viewing and Analysis tab, and you can just toggle References. Sometimes, if you have you know a ton of planes or lots of complicated reference geometry, and you just want to see the model without all that stuff getting in the way, you can turn them off here. Same thing with Sketches. So we want to make sure that Sketches and References are turned on. Okay, so the first thing that we do every time we start a part is we're going to pick a plane, and we're going to make our first sketch. So in this case, let's select the X, Y plane. We're going to select it. And normally, we've been going up here to activate 2D sketch. But now we're going to show another way, which is we're just going to right click the plane. And we're going to say activate 2D sketch here. So we see the screen's changed. We're in sketch mode. We have our grid. Uh, and we're ready to start sketching. So in the past, we've done rectangles and we've done polygons. Uh, now we're going to use the line tool. So go ahead and select the line tool. And we're going to introduce an important concept uh, in this sketch called constraints. Constraints, before we get into the sketch, are basically uh, real world limitations on what the geometry can do. Uh, the sketch constraints all live up here. Uh, there's the lock or the fixed constraint, symmetric, co-radial, collinear, equal, vertical, coincident, um, concentric, perpendicular. There's a whole bunch of them. And basically what they do is they, they uh, apply some limitations to what your sketches can do. So I'll show you with an example. If I single click to start a line and single click to stop a line somewhere, there's no constraint applied to this. So I can move it however I want. Let me go to the Select tool. And you can pick a node and drag it around. If I were to apply a horizontal constraint to this by single clicking the horizontal constraint and then clicking on the line, this basically tells a Libre Atom 3D, no matter what I do, no matter what dimensions I have or anything else, this thing is always going to be horizontal. Similarly, uh, there's different kinds of constraints like an equal constraint. So if I make two circles, at a certain point they're approximately equal and uh, you'll see two constraint symbols are being inferred here. If I finish the circle while that's happening, a Libre is going to uh, put these constraints between these two figures. This is an equal constraint. It says, no matter what happens, make sure these are always equal. So if I were to change the size of one, the other one's gonna update. There's lots of different kinds of constraints uh, like we went through earlier, but just have a basic idea now of what they do. So let's go ahead and start with this profile. We're making an L shape and we're gonna click a line and we're going to start at the origin. Single click, move the mouse, and we see that 
a horizontal constraint is being implied right below the dimension. We'll single click to end. We'll move the mouse straight up. Single click again. Move the mouse directly to the left. We see in this case a parallel constraint is being applied automatically. Single click. Move it up. Move it to the left. And then down to where we started. Double click to end. So now we've got this profile and we see, oh, we've, we've kind of made a mistake here. This needs to be straight up and down. Otherwise that bracket's not gonna be a very good bracket. And this line also needs to be kind of left and right. Well, we can apply a constraint to this. So let's click the, the, the vertical constraint and we're just gonna single click this line. And now we fix that right up. So as you try to drag different nodes around, you'll notice that uh, all of the figures respect the constraints that are applied to them. Now there's a few things about this bracket that uh, are important to our design. First of all, we know that the lengths of the sides are the same. So we're gonna click an equal constraint and we're gonna click the major sides and we see an equal constraint has been applied to those. So if I go to the select tool and I change the size of one, the other size updates automatically. The other thing that we know is that the thickness of the bracket, those are also the same. So I can apply another equal constraint to the, th to the sides that define the thickness. Back to the select tool. And now if I move things around, this bracket always kind of respects uh, the design intent that I've built in by adding these constraints in. Now there's other ways that you could do this. You could just, just you could say, well, you know what? I'm just gonna dimension uh, the sides to be the same and then I don't have to worry about that, right? You could, you could do it that way. Um, but a more efficient way is to you know, use a combination of constraints and dimensions in order to, uh, to do the least amount of work while building in the most intelligence into the model. So uh, we've kind of gone through this process. We've got a few constraints. If yours don't look exactly the same as these, that's fine. Uh, just kind of add some basic ones that seem reasonable. So like an equal constraint to this line and this line would be good an equal constraint to this line and this line would be good. And make sure your other ones are horizontal or vertical as needed. Now we're gonna add a dimension. We know the thickness of this bracket is gonna be 0.2 inches. And because of this equal constraint, this one automatically updated too. So we don't have to make two dimensions now. And we know that the length of the bracket is gonna be three inches. So let's type in three and press enter. At this stage, we've got our L just like we want it. So we're going to turn this into a 3D model by going on the part modeling tab and clicking on extrude. We're gonna extrude it to a depth of 4.5 inches. And now we've got the basics done. Now we need to add the holes in on each side. So let's click this flat face here. We're gonna right click, activate 2D sketch. We're gonna just make two circles. And you'll notice as we do this, we don't really worry about where they are. That's because we're gonna define where they are with dimensions and constraints. So don't spend too much time getting it exactly right or making sure they're the right size. Uh, one thing we know about these circles is that they are the same size and they always should be the same size. So let's put an equal constraint between them by selecting equal under constraints and we'll single click that and we'll single click that. Now we see an equal constraint has been applied and if we change the size of one, the other one updates, which is what we want. 
the next thing that we know is that uh, the dimension of this hole should be 0.3 inches. So we'll click dimension, we'll click the circle, we'll single place, single click to place the dimension and we'll type in 0.3. Now even though this circle doesn't have a dimension on it, it's still the right size because there's an equal constraint between these two. Now we need to position these in the right location and we want these to be 0.7 inches from each corner. So we're going to click the dimension tool. And up until now, we've only dimensioned the size of figures. We haven't really dimensioned their location. But what you can do is click on the edge of a model, or you can click on uh, certain planes or the origin to dimension the location of items. In this case, we're going to pick right on the model. So as we hover over, we can see the mouse changes to indicate we're hovering over an edge with this cube and kind of red edges. So that's what we want. We want to click Dimension, hover over this, single click it, and now we want to click the Origin. And what this does is it's placing a dimension between the two. So I'm going to go over here to place the dimension, and I'm going to type in 0.7. I'm going to do the same thing with the side. Single click, single click, place, 0.7. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Single click, click the origin, place the dimension, 0.7. And finally, I'm going to place the vertical dimension. Click the top edge. Click that. Now we're going to click the origin, place 0.7. Now, if you ever move the view and you want to get back to the, to the straight on view, click the little reset view uh, at the top left of the sketching toolbar. As we go, uh, you want to make sure that your sketches are kind of well maintained. So we're just going to do a little bit of cleanup in the select tool and move some of these dimensions to make them a little bit nicer. So now that we have it properly placed, properly sized, we're going to use an extrude tool, but a different one to remove material instead of adding it. So go to the part modeling tab and click over here on the cut section. We'll click the extrude cut. And basically what we know is we want this, uh, this to remove material. There's a few ways you could approach this, but uh, for now, just make sure it goes past uh, the length of this. For example, you wouldn't you wouldn't want it, you know, right in here. Just make sure it's over here, and press OK. And we see that we have made two holes. Now we're going to repeat that process uh, over here. So we're going to right click on this face, activate 2D Sketch. We'll move a little bit faster this time. Circle. As we made the circle, we ended it while there was an equal constraint uh, inferred. And so that automatically places an equal constraint for us. Point 0.7. Point seven. Point seven. Point seven. And we know the size of this. Well, we actually forgot the size. We're not sure what we used up here. So what we're going to do is do the select tool. And we're going to hover over this. We're going we're gonna to single click an edge or a face. And we can see at the bottom of the screen, uh, we get some information about that. So the diameter is 0.3. So we're going to add a dimension of 0.3 by single clicking it and 0.3.
Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go to part modeling, extrude cut. And we're just going to make sure it goes past it and press OK. So we are well on our way to making a cool bracket. The last thing we're going to do is round off some edges. So up until now, uh, all the features that we've made have started with a sketch. Everything in the geometry transform section doesn't need a sketch. These are things you do directly on 3D models. So a fillet is a good example of this. We're going to make a 3D fillet by clicking the fillet tool. And we're going to select multiple edges at, a, at the same time just by single clicking them. As we click them, we see a preview is created and the edge populates. So we're going to change this radius to be 0.6. We'll press tab to see a preview. And that looks good, so we're going to press apply. And there we have uh, our bracket. Control-Shift-P and Control-Shift-K will get rid of the sketches and the uh, reference geometry so we can see a clean version of the model.